Which of the following is an example of man in the middle or MITM attack? Is it A phishing? Is it B ransomware? Is it C brute force attack or is it D spoofing? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is D, spoofing. In a man in the middle attack or MITM, an attacker intercepts and potentially alters communication between two parties. Spoofing can involve impersonating one of the parties in the communication. And for the incorrect answers, phishing is a separate attack where attackers trick users into revealing sensitive information, ransomware encrypts data and demands a ransom for decryption, and brute force attacks, this is not typically associated with MITM attacks. And for the next question or exam, question number two. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of a buffer overflow attack? Is it A, to flood the network with traffic? Is it B, to intercept encrypted communication? Is it C, to gain unauthorized access to a system? Or is it D, to exhaust system resources? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, to gain unauthorized access to a system. Buffer overflow attacks exploit vulnerabilities in software to execute malicious code and gain unauthorized access. And for the incorrect answers to flood the network with traffic, this is typically associated with DOS or denial of service attacks. To intercept encrypted communication, this is not the primary purpose of buffer overflow attacks. And to exhaust system resources, this is also not the primary purpose of buffer overflow attacks. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, which of the following is a characteristic of a zero-day vulnerability? Is it A, it, uh, it is well known and documented? Is it B, it has patch or fix available? Is it C, attackers exploit it before a vendor releases a fix? Or is it D, it is a low priority vulnerability? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Attackers exploited before a vendor releases a fix. Zero-day vulnerabilities are exploited by attackers before a vendor has a chance to provide a patch or a fix. And for the incorrect answer is it is well known and documented. Zero-day vulnerabilities are not well known initially. It has a patch or fix available. Zero days by definition do not have fixes. And it is a low priority vulnerability. Zero-day vulnerabilities are often high priority due to their critical nature. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, which type of attack involves sending a large volume of traffic to overwhelm a network or a system? Is it A, phishing? Is it B, social engineering? It's, is it C, denial of service or DOS attack? Or is it D, man in the middle or MITM attack? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, denial of service or DOS attack. A DOS attack floods a network or system with traffic to make it unavailable to users. And for the incorrect answers, phishing is a social engineering attack aimed at tricking users into revealing information. Social engineering involves manipulating individuals to create uh, to reveal information. And man in the middle attacks intercept and potentially alter communication but don't necessarily involve overwhelming traffic. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, which of the following is an example of a physical security threat? Is it A, ransomware? Is it B, insider threat? Is it C, theft of hardware? Or is it D, DDoS attack? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, theft of hardware. Physical security threats involve physical access or damage to hardware or facilities. And for the incorrect answers, ransomware is a form of malware. Inside the threat can involve both physical and digital actions. And DDoS attacks uh, target network availability but don't necessarily involve physical access. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what is the primary goal of a spear phishing attack? Is it A, to compromise a specific individual or organization? Is it B, to flood the network with traffic? Is it C, to encrypt data and demand a ransom? Or is it D, to impersonate a trusted entity? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is A, to compromise a specific individual or organization. Spear phishing attacks are highly targeted, aiming to compromise specific individuals or organizations. And for the incorrect answers to flood the network with traffic, this is not the primary goal of spear phishing. To encrypt data and demand a ransom, this is a goal of ransomware, not spear phishing. And to impersonate a trusted entity, this is a goal of a ver a various attacks, including MITM. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, which of the following is a common security measure to mitigate the risks of social engineering attacks? Is it A, patching software regularly? Is it B, implementing two-factor two authentication or 2FA? Is it C, using intrusion detection systems or IDS? Or is it D, conducting vulnerability assessments? You now have five seconds.
And the correct answer is B, implementing two-factor authentication, or 2FA. 2FA adds an extra layer of security and helps prevent unauthorized access even if credentials are compromised through social engineering. And for the incorrect answers, patching software regularly, it's important but it's not direct mitigation for social uh, engineering. Using intrusion detection systems or IDS, IDS detects suspicious, suspicious activity but doesn't prevent social engineering. And conducting vulnerability assessments impo is important for identifying weaknesses but not a direct mitigation for social engineering. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, which of the following is a technique used in watering hole attack? Is it A, gaining physical access to a facility? Is it B, compromising a website commonly visited by the target? Is it C, intercepting network traffic? Or is it D, launching a DDoS attack? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is B, compromising a website commonly visited by the target. In a watering hole attack, attackers compromise a website that the target frequently visits hoping to infect the target's device. And for the incorrect answers, gaining physical access to facility. This is not a typically, uh, typical technique in watering hole attacks. Intercepting network traffic. This is more typically of MITM or man-in-the-middle attacks. And launching a DDoS attack or this distributed denial of service attack aims to disrupt network availability, not compromise targets. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, what is the primary goal of an advanced persistent threat or APT attack? Is it A, to gain unauthorized access and steal data? Is it B, to launch a DDoS attack? Is it C, to compromise a specific individual's bank account? Or is it D, to infect as many devices as possible with malware? You have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, to gain unauthorized access and steal data. APT attacks are sophisticated and focus on infiltrating and exfiltrating sensitive data. And for the incorrect answers to launch a DDoS attack, APT attacks are not typically associated with DDoS, DDoS attacks. To compromise a specific individual's bank account, APT attacks target organizations, not individuals, and to infect as many devices as possible with malware, APT attacks are more focused and selective. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of a threat actor in watering hole attack? Is it A, to directly steal user credentials? Is it B, to compromise the target's organization's servers? Is it C, to lure and infect specific targets? Or is it D, to flood the website with traffic? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C, to lure and infect specific targets. Threat actors in a watering hole attack aim to infect specific individuals or organizations by compromising a website they commonly visit. And for the incorrect answers, to directly steal users' credentials, while this can happen as a result of the attack, it's not the primary purpose. To compromise the target's organization servers, this is not the primary goal of a watering hole attack. And to flood the website with traffic, this is not the typical objective of watering hole attacks. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTIA exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and they are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!